Hello everyone, I'm Colin Cadet. Today I've got something a little different for you. I'm building a mobile stand for my clamps, but there's a little bit of a twist on this one uh, that makes it a little, a little bit unique. And when we get into the build, you'll see what that is. But before I get to that, I wanted to talk about uh, several weeks ago, I made an invitation for woodworking guilds and clubs. Uh, if you're looking for speakers because you want to keep the club going, maybe you want to bring new people in or guests in, that I would be available for that and I, many people have taken me up on that. Um, I've even had one from Canada and uh, one from the UK uh, and I've already done four or five of them. I think there's another 10 or so yet to do in the next two or three months but that invitation is still open. It's free. I do it for free. Uh, maximum 45 minutes and if you've got a guild or a club and you want to keep it going and keep people interested, uh, I'd be happy to be a guest speaker for you so you can contact me and let me know. In the meantime, let's get on with this build. Now there's my some of my old original uh, round bar clamps uh, and they work really well. I'm going to hang on to some of those uh, but I've got some of these new Bessie clamps. You can see there's three different kinds there for different things and I'm really starting to like these. The problem is they don't really fit on this original rack that I made a long time ago. So I only have four of these original K-body version uh, but they, I, they're really heavy and I'm finding they take up a lot of room. Uh, when I stack them up like that, you know, those are over nine inches, uh, that nine inches that they take. But when I was designing this thing and looking at what I could do, I decided to try this. Look at this. What, look at what happens here. If you flip these around sort of end for end, And it's pretty easy to do that. They stack pretty easy. And look at that. Now instead of taking up 9 inches, it only takes up 5 inches. So I could get tw almost twice as many clamps on the same size rack. Which really means I don't have to make a rack that's you know, 30 inches wide, I could actually make it quite a bit narrower. So that's precisely what I'm going to do because I'm going to work on being able to flip them rather than stacking them all side by side. Now I picked up this beautiful quarter sawn, nice and dry fur and it's perfect for this, but it's really overkill. I don't want to do something, I don't need to overbuild this thing. This vertically, this wood is way thicker than it ever needs to be, or way wider. Um, and what I'm more concerned about is the racking. I, this is going to have some heavy uh, clamps on it, and I don't want it to rack like this. So I'm going to be more concerned about that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this wood and trim it down, because it doesn't need to be this wide. Uh, but what I am going to do when I put the cross pieces on, I'm going to make sure that they're nice and wide because they are going to help to prevent, to prevent the racking of this whole stand. So to save us some time, I'm not going to show you cutting all the wood. There's really nothing fancy about what I'm going to be doing. Um, I got to cut this off at four foot four inches, uh, a little bit of ripping, and uh, maybe some angle cuts. We might show something there, but uh, I'll just cut up the wood and then we'll start working at putting it together in the detail and what's involved with that. Now on the floor I have what's going to be the stand or the base of this, um, but this back part here is going to be vertical straight up and down and the reason for that is I want to be able to push it right up against the wall and the only part that's going to be angled is this part here that will be on the other side and that way I'll still be able to put some clamps in the middle here. Uh, my round bar clamps I think I'll put those in the middle because I don't use those as often anymore. So. So I just worked out the angle of the base and I'll cut those both at the same angle. Uh, turns out it's 97.3 and I'll just set that up on the miter saw. Now I need to cut the tops off the two angle pieces and they're going to be at the same angle so I don't even have to adjust anything. So 
So just so you can see what I'm doing for the layout here, as you can see, I have my carpenter square and it's clamped to the wood at the back. This wood is clamped to the square at the bottom and this, the square is actually lifted off the deck a little bit. Uh, I have a couple of thin pieces of plywood under there. What I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to make these cross pieces and rather than do all sorts of measuring and angles, I'm just going to lay it out the way it's going to sit because this is going to come up like this and sit vertically so I'm just going to be able to mark that like that and I've got one at the other side just double check it and I can mark that one as well and now I can cut those inserts and I'll make two of them one for each side well I have all the components for the sides and I I just need to assemble them now and I've decided what I'm going to do. I could use pocket holes in this but I want something a little bit stronger so I'm going to be using my doweling jig for that and what I really like about the doweling jig is I don't even have to compensate for a little bit of an angle. I can just put my doweling jig right on there and it will just drill a hole straight in and that will go straight into the sides. I don't even have to worry about compensating for that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill all of those holes and when we come back we should be able to start doing some assembly on this. Okay, I'm just doing a dry, finishing a dry fit here. And if you're new to my channel you're probably asking how come you're using those red dowels Colin? And that's because they're a tiny bit, I made them a little bit smaller because if I use the regular dowels on there it's too tight to take apart. It's such a tight fit. So I use dowels that are a little bit loose. I've sanded them down a little bit. I've got two different sizes, blues and reds. Um, but look at that. There it is. Everything all fits perfectly together. And uh, now all I need to do is take it all apart and I'll start gluing that all together. I'm not going to make you sit through all that gluing. Basically, it's just taking it apart taking out all the red dowels and uh, replacing them with the natural wood dowels and gluing it all up. So just to show you one set that I'm going to do, here's one of the curved pieces and I'm not doing anything special. I just put the jig on there like that and it will drill holes straight in and they will match the other side. So for gluing larger pieces like this, what I like to do is I'll put a little bit of glue in each one of the holes and I'm going to do this entire rail. Uh, then I'm going to take my um, little acid brush and just brush a little bit of glue on each dowel and then I'm going to drive it in with a hammer and I'm going to do this back rail. I'm going to do all the uprights first of all so there will be dowels sticking out of them. Um, like so. Then I'll come along, this doll is a bit big but um, you'll get to see anyway. Then I'll do the same, I'll coat the top of this and I'll put hole, um, glue in the holes and then I'll put all of the uprights in like that, or sorry, all of the, uh, I guess these are side members because these are the uprights here. Uh, and that way I get everything done without any, I don't have to worry about glue setting up on me too early. I do everything a piece at a time, um, nice and easy, and that way we get a good job. Okay, this is the second gable in. Now I'm just finishing up that. And I've put glue in the holes and on the dowels. And everything's lining up. Oops. There we go.
Okay. Well, that took about 20 minutes to figure out where these cross members need to go. And you can see I've only got them clamped on right now. Uh, but I'm just loving the way this is coming together because the lower ones I'll be putting on upside down. And I don't know if you can tell, but inside here, this is going to sit on the inside towards the inside of this gable end. And that way, when this goes in, it won't slip down. It will it should butt up against that wood down here so that it will stay on there. So the lower ones can be upside down, the upper ones can be right side up, and I'll be able to get more in less area, which is brilliant. Uh, the back I'm not really worried about. I'll put some more cross pieces in the back and I'll make something that will hold the, the round bar, uh, the round bar bar clamps. And, uh, and then of course I'll mount the whole thing on this um, platform. I have that already done. I don't know if you can see that from there, but that's the, the wheeled base for it. So not very far before we get this finished. So I'll carry on. Now I'm going to do the same thing, um, putting dowels in here because there's going to be a lot of weight on there. So I need to make sure I have a good sturdy cross members. Well, I am making some headway. I have drilled all the holes for all of the cross members and now I just need to go and put some dowels in each one of them and uh, then I'll put the cross members in. So I want to take a minute and just sort of catch you up where I'm at right now and you can see that I've put dowels in all of the insides of both the gable ends and I'm ready to start putting the uprights up and I've got the top of each one marked. I always mark a face side somewhere so they'll all fit on the same way, the way that I've drilled the holes for them. The only thing, so I'll put all the uprights on the back here and then I'll bring the top up and over on top and that's those dowels will fit into the, the tops of these uh, cross members. Now the only thing that I've done a little bit off camera, a couple things, I've drilled some pocket holes in all of the bases so that when I can fasten it to the um, mobile base I'll have something to do that with so I've done that. The other thing that I've done is I've made, because I've got these round bar clamps that I'm still holding on to a few of them because I like them for certain uh, glue ups um, and I, I don't have a place to store them on here nicely so they're going to sit in the back and one of these uprights I just put my tape here I always mark things on here so that I remind myself of what I've done uh, so that when I come back I know exactly what's going to happen. So this upright is going to go in that position like that and you can see I've got some dowels in there. Then I went ahead and made some uh, inserts to go into that and when this is all assembled that will go on there like that and those um, these round clamps will then just sit nicely in there so Well, there's my clamp rack all completed, and I even took a minute to get some uh, anti-skid material, and I have that installed. It's just stapled on the back, but what a difference that makes on there. It keeps all the clamps from moving around. Uh, it just really works well on this. I'm really happy the way it worked, and especially in the lower side. Have a look at that. So down in this lower part where the clamps are going to be upside down, uh, this anti-skid material keeps these from moving around. I can move the cart around. These don't move around. And what that means is I don't need to put little cleats in here to stop these from moving around. And it just saves me more space on here. So I'm really happy the way this has turned out. And this anti-skid material has been a, it's just a, such a handy thing in the workshop. Well, that's my rack all finished. I just need to slide it into the corner. And if in the future I pick up a few more clamps, I've got lots of room to put them on here. I'm just really happy with the way this build turned out. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.